Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Um, these are the heads that are getting ready to get used on the 48 LS Dino Mule. I know you're like, wait a minute, I don't even see your face. Who even is this guy? It's a blessing that you're not seeing my face, and that's why I'm doing the videos like this. But anyway, these just came in, and I bought these outright, so I didn't ask Pro Max. These are Pro Max LS3 260cc heads. I didn't ask them to send me a set for free or nothing. I mean, I did. I asked for the small port, but I actually bought these outright just so I'd have a set. Anyway, I'm going to be using these on the Dino Mule, but my last week I had a valve job instead of these two sets of heads like these, and they were a son of a bitch. So what I mean by that was the first one I had to port, so I was going to port it anyway, so I always put my own valve job on because it flows more. These seats that they put in these heads are so hard um, that your tool bit when you're using their seat and guide machine better be the sharpest it's ever been in its life. And maybe you can cut two seats on it perfect and then the third one will not be and you'll have to resharpen it. It was a horrible one. I ended up using stones and it took me all day to get through with one. The other set was just a guide coming in for a refresh, but I got them. So I kept thinking, I, I you know, I've sold these, but... I offer these heads, any heads I sell, in two options. And most people, because they're cheap, they don't choose the second option. But the first option is I'll sell them exactly like you get from Promax for the same price you get from Promax, Jig, Summit, whatever else. Same whether it be Brodix, AFR, all those. I'll sell them exactly like they are from them, except for I am going to flow them. Every set of heads that I sell, you get a flow sheet with it. But I'm not putting them together unless you pay me extra. So if you're like, I want you to check the heads over, it costs extra for, to, for that to happen. So for a lot of people, I tell them it's $100 for me to check them. And then if there's something wrong, I can work with the manufacturer, we can send them back, or I can fix it myself, and that's going to cost you more money. But that $100 gets applied towards a bill. Typically, they just if they have that and there's a problem, they're like, well, send it back, and we'll get another set in, then we'll check it, and if that's fine, we'll keep going. Or several times, they're like, well, just go ahead and cut the valve job. But, <coughs> excuse me, many people just don't. They're like, eh, it's cost too much. They're probably fine. And I'd be honest with them. I'd say, depends on the head, really. Um, certain heads, flawless. So you could take your pretty much AFR small block Chevy heads, pretty much they're going to seal out of the box. Um, their big block Chevys pretty much seal out of the box. Almost, not always. Um, Brodix, um, all their nicer heads, like their Dragon Slayers and... There are three extra stuff, those still out of the box. The race rights, and the IK, sometimes. So I'd say you're probably seven out of ten times they still out, but the other three times they're not. And you're like, oh my gosh, how can you say that? Because I see them so often. Anyway, same with, and that's all manufacturers pretty much. So point being is, I was hoping I could just slap these puppies on the old dino mule. I mean, obviously I'm going to tear them apart anyway and I'll flow them. Because I'm going to sell a book for this Dino Mule as well. So I'm going to flow all eight cylinders and see how they vary. Just like I did with the small block when I did the small block mule. Anyway, I was, I'm going to tear them all down and flow them. But I'm, these are going to have to be altered because I already vacuum tested them outside of the video. And they didn't pass, which means they aren't sealing up. So I have to redo it. So they aren't going to be completely stocked from the factory because they aren't sealing. So you're like, well, how do you know they're not sealing? Well, this is my seat and guide machine, and I'm only capturing a little bit of it for you guys to see. But this is a vacuum gauge, and here's essentially what it does. I'm going to flick it on real quick without kicking the camera. Here we go. This is a vacuum pad. And when you flick it on, you cover it, it pulls a vacuum. And this is the best it's going to be, and that's what it should be. What I'll do is I'll vacuum test the exhaust ports, and I think those were all good. It's the intake ports were bad. And you'll see, they're gonna pull about what that needle did just a second ago. So really, if you can zoom in on your camera, I'm not gonna zoom in on mine because then I have to change the positions and there's just me filming. But you can kind of tell when the needle gets over there, that's where it should be. If it's up on this line here, it's not so good. And if it's definitely this way, it's not good at all. So look at that line there. It's, you need to be past it. So this line right here. So here we go. Good to go there. Good to go there. Yep. 
Yep. Now that's what it should look like. Now we're gonna roll this over to the exhaust. Now I'll warn you, there's holes here that go through the ports on some of them. So these are where the rocker stand bolt holes are. Sometimes they go into the ports, so I gotta put my finger over to block that air leak. Not all of them are that way. Some break through and some don't. So you see my finger up there, that's what it's for. That's a negative, that's one. One good one. That one's not quite as good. So if you call that passing, it just barely did. That's your C minus. And you've got another C minus. So. Definite fail. I mean, I'm not, that's not sealing up, okay? That ain't, that ain't right. These three here are close, but not quite. So I needed to take this, I'm gonna take it off anyway. I'm gonna see what actually it even is. Maybe, and I don't, before I go, I'm not bashing Pro Max, everybody does this. There's no manufacturer out there that mass produce says. I'm not talking about specialty guys like myself, MBE, or any of the others that are out there that specialize in just cylinder heads. I'm talking about mass producers that they sell constant sets of heads like hundreds and thousands. Um, those guys are just got to get it out. It's production, right? So they're all doing it. It's not just Promax. I mean, everybody, every manufacturer I've seen, Dart, Brodux, AFR, all of that's some problem. Aldebrock, doesn't matter. But anyway, I'm going to take this off and see because what might be the case is there might have accidentally been some trash that just got stuck between the seat and the valve and that's why it's not sealing. So I'm going to take it apart and we'll see. Okay, so I popped out a valve. I've got my light shining through here. And the only thing that kind of looks like it might be it, and it's going to be super hard to see on camera. I'm going to try to get it to capture correctly. The light's even trying to help there. Yeah, you can kind of see it. I'm going to point right there. You see that? And you can actually see it go up. That's kind of a shadow, but you can see that. What that is is it looks like when they bowl blended, they got carried away with the grinder and it got up into the seat. That's the only obvious sign that it might be, but what I'm gonna do is, and this is a way to test, this is when you use lapping. Not to fix a valve job, to see if you've got a problem, but you can kind of see it, look again right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some lapping compound on the valve, I'm gonna give it a good whirl, and we'll see what spots are missing. And see if maybe that'll fix it. Because lapping can fix small mistakes. But as much vacuum as this thing is not pulling, chances are we've got a bigger problem than that. Now, you're looking at the seat and you're saying, well, how is this so hard to cut? This is some copper impregnated chinesium. Because this isn't normal. And I wish the hell all the manufacturers would get together and go talk to Brodix and AFR. And say, hey, we would like to use the ductile iron that you use in your AFR small block Chevy LS heads, your big block Chevy heads, AFR, whatever that one is, that material. And same with Brodix, whatever you use in your Dragon Slayers and in your three extras, not your Race Rights, not your IKs. Those ones are powdered metal hard as hell. I'm talking the ductile iron in Brodix, Dragon Slayers, Track Ones, and your three extras and Everything that's in AFR besides the enforcers. Use that material. Stop using, look, I'm going to get fancy and put some copper in there because that's what GM did. This stuff's hard to cut. And if it's hard to cut for me and I'm taking my time, I know you're not taking your time. They ain't sealing up. So, Chinesium. If you want to copy something, copy a good ductile iron seat. Start with that before you go copying a head. But anyway. I hate these seats. So let's lap it in and see what happens. Well, it just keeps getting better. In case you're wondering what I did, I used some valve, some lapping compound. Now this is 400 grit. It can't get this at your local AutoZone or O'Reilly's or whatever. This one's actually from Goodson. They charge you out the rear end for this little tube here, by the way. So I highly recommend what you do is you go get a, if you're doing this often enough, go find Clover 400 grit in a big old container. 
and the whole big old container is like 20 bucks. They charge you like 18 for this. There's a little bit, and there's a few dollops in it. They never fill it all the way up either. Took me a while to figure that little trick out. But anyway, this is 400 grit. We've got finer ones too. So I've got 600 grit. I sometimes use on some stuff just to see how close I am. But 400 grit's it. You typically, when a 400 grit, when you put that on the valve and you lap it in, if it doesn't fix it, and it is, and it, it's got to be really, really close for it to actually fix it. But if it doesn't, it means you're off by more than three thousandths out of round. So that's about it. Just gives you an idea. So if you got 400 grit and it shows any shadows where there's not stuff, which we're going to see in a second, you're more than three thousandths out of round. So, but. It does, I, I use this quite a bit. So, and I will say this, if you're within one thousandths, this will pick it right there. It'll be perfect. But this is what I use. Do you have to use lap and compound? Absolutely not. If it passes vacuum tests and you bounces correctly and you've done everything right, you don't really need a lap. It's just a tool. It is not a fixing. If you tried using this 400 grit to fix what I'm about to show you, you're going to be in it for days, especially with these hard seats. Good luck. Your arm is going to, shoulder is going to be so sore. Ain't no way. But anyway, so I lapped the valve, the, put the lapping compound on the valve, which we can talk about, oof, that ain't pretty. And then we'll get, and put it on the valve, the seat, and did a couple little rounds. I didn't just do one time, I did a few, and up and down. I don't need to, think I need to teach you how to lap, but it didn't keep going on it for a minute or nothing like that, but there we go. So, but anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my light here, and you can see the ring. You see the ring? Look at the gray ring. That's what you want to see. And you'll notice, see right there where the light is? Watch when I move it away. See where it's missing? Huge section. We can see the lap line. See the lap line over here? We can't see it is right there. See what I mean? It's missing. Clear as day. It is missing. Good, not there. Let me see if I can get it to focus. There we go. Not there. Right in that range, right there. I'm gonna do it from this side so maybe you can see better. Get the idea. Now the other way around, it's not bad. You can see it the rest of the way. It's kind of feathery through this area. By the way, if you ever use a flashlight to do this, don't look where the light's showing. Look right behind it, and then you can trace it around. So you can see feathering through there, and you see nothing through there. So right through there is where it's not sealing, and you can see it. There's just, man, I'm going to move my hands around so you can see better. You can see now. Let me get the camera a little. There we go. See how much it's not? I mean, it's clear. That ain't sealing. But I wish that was my only problem that I have. Let's look at the valve. This happens from time to time too. Sometimes when things don't seal, and I actually had this happen once this week with the titanium valve, it wasn't round, so I had to reface it. That, that's easy to fix. Refacing valves is so much easier than doing a valve job on the head. But anyway, for those that don't know, and you're looking at this, and you're like, I don't see a problem at all. There's a line all the way around it, so the valve's perfectly okay. Not a problem there. For those that do this for long enough, you already know what the problem is because you can see it clean as day. That gray line is where the valve will hit the seat. Do you see how much silver is underneath it? You see how much that is? A lot. So what this means is this is a 2.165 head diameter. The valve job is probably for a 214 because you have all this extra material it's not at. Now you might say, well, I do valve jobs that way. If it's an industrial application that's meant to last a long, long time, I might have this valve job on the valve that far up. Why? Because it gives it more material between here and the bottom of the valve. In other words, it's thicker where it's actually hitting. That's for industrial use. LS is, I'm sure there are some that run on industrial stuff, but things that people that purchase aftermarket LS3 heads are not doing it for industrial use. That line should be a razor thin edge because I always leave a little when I'm doing valve jobs but I mean it looks like a fine line like a small hair this is so big you can visually see it like a lot it looks like I could put a 20,000 feeler gauge underneath the lap line so it's not out far enough 
So what am I getting at through this whole thing? These are the heads going to be used on the LS Dino Mule. And I'm going to have to modify them. So before when I used the Promax Project X 215cc heads on the um, small log Chevy Dino Mule, I actually vacuum tested them. They passed every one of them. Why? Do, 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 do. Here's why. They put cast iron or ductile iron, even though there's chinesium ductile iron seats in the Project X heads. They're not the, the same as um, Brodix or AFR. They're harder steel. Don't know why. But still, those are easier to machine than this. So this seat material that you see here is not the same one using a small block Chevy. As a matter of fact, of all the Promax heads I've cut, these are the only ones that have this copper impregnated garbage seats that I hate. Like, well, it takes heat out. Ductile iron has never had a problem with that either. The correct ductile iron. It's ridiculous. As a matter of fact, I don't even know. I bet you they can't even tell you what the material content is in this. Uh, and I'm not talking about Promax. Promax get these from a Chinese importer and then they they're, they do the blending and then they're supposed to do this with the stone. I guess the guy just had a bad day. You never know. Maybe his wife divorced him or maybe the boss said, no, you can't have the day off that you requested four months ago. Who knows? But yeah, anyway, point being is these are getting redone. So they're not going to be absolutely stock to stock when I compare the 408 LS versus the 408, uh, 406 small block Chevy. It's probably going to pick up flow because when you bring the valve, the job, valve job out further, it does pick up flow. So yeah, that's going to probably flow more than it would out of the box. So not close, but good news when the small block Chevy is We've tested so many different sets of cylinder heads that uh, we can kind of compare it to the best cylinder head then maybe. I don't know, but point being is it won't be stock. A little bit longer of a video. Good luck for all of you guys right now that are trying to lap in something that looks like this. You go, you Popeye strong arm people. I'm proud of you. Um, by the way, there is another way to do it. So let me just show you this one. If you have this tool, this will work. This is the other option to fit it. Whenever you hear me say I'm talking about using a stone, this one I mean. So, let me show you. First off, we have a pilot that's in here. So this is the pilot. These are not cheap, these are carbine ones. That's the one I use for my seat and guide machine. This is a 375 top for those of the machinist ones. For those of the guys that are like at home, you don't even know what I'm talking about. That one pilot right there is $300. You can get steel ones. You don't need to use carbide for doing this. The steel ones run about, I think it's something like 60, 70 bucks a piece. You're gonna need one that's sized for that. The bad news is if you're just a home guy, you're probably not gonna be able to pick the right one that you need right off. Good thing I'll sell them to you, the pilots as well. But like I said, that one pilot's like 80 bucks. Then you have to have something like this. Now this is a, this part right here, just the metal piece is called a stone holder. This one's actually, there's a Goodson part number again, which means you're about to be taking it in. The, well, you get the idea. It says Goodson, so that's what it means. Goodson. Anyway, this one is for my 375 top because that 375 top right there is the pilot. So that's the top of my pilot. And this holder is a special one that Goodson makes that's for that. So, yes, they charge a lot for it, and I am teasing them about that. But without them, this part, this holder doesn't exist. Anyway... The last part is the part I'm talking about. This is the stone. So these stones, and this is a brand new one. I'm just using it for demonstration purposes. They are have to be cut at a certain angle. So if you just even had these three pieces, you ain't got enough. You're still going to have to have something that dresses this stone. And essentially what you do with this is you've got your pilot sitting in here. And this is a special stone. There's different stone compounds I probably should point out. This is what they call the fine one. This is for finishing. So this isn't for grinding to make the valve bigger. This is just for simply fixing this problem right here. And all you really do is you take your uh, holder and it slides over the pilot and you turn it. Except for you don't really turn it with your hand. You, you're going to have something like this. Now this is the air powered one. This is then air powered. It goes on there and it spins it and that's what it does. Now you're like, well, that looks like a DA center. That won't be so bad. I know. But if you buy this from Goodson, it's $1,100. But if you buy a DA Sander from Harbor Freight, it's, it's only $110. I know, it's weird, huh? Anyway, it spins on here. 
And what it essentially does, it works like lapping, but better. And it would eventually, you could tell it's taken away some of that la lapping compound already. See how some of it's kind of gone? That's from just from me turning it. So essentially what it does is it, it removes a few thousands. And you can use this to fix what your seat and guide machine might get off a little. Because it's just one big blade cutting across. So this it fixes that. That's what it's good for. And as long as your pilot's nice and the guide straight, these are the best. And this is actually gets it the most accurate round seat is using a stone. Not the seat and guide machine that's using a stone. So once you've done that, you can fix it. Now, I could do that right now on this and fix that issue. The catch is it still will not fix that. Because here's something else to think about. When you're cutting with the stone, put this over here so I'll drop it. When I'm cutting with the stone, what you're doing is you're taking that 45 and you'll end up making it wider. Because as you're grinding, it's going to widen out. So in this spot right here, it won't widen at all, but the spot opposite from it is going to get really wide because it's already touching here the minute you start grinding. It hadn't touched there at all. So you have wide 45 degree seat over here and narrow over here. Eventually, they're going to seal though because the whole 45 is all the way around. It will mess up flow and stuff, but it will seal. So that's one of the disadvantages of using a stone is it will seal absolutely, but you might have dramatically changed how the head flows from doing that. Because having a thicker 45 degree seat on one side than the other does affect flow. When you do a valve job on a seat and guide machine, they're the same width on each side and hopefully you get it around. But with these seats, not necessarily. And still, in order to fix this, you have to get a more aggressive stone, save this blue one. I think they've got one more aggressive than this anyway, that they would ideally like to use. And you'll end up grinding, and that 45 is going to get really, really wide. And then you're going to have to come in with a different stone angle. So this is a 45 degree, but you might have to come in with like a 60 or something to do the under one than the top one. And then in all this, you're like, well, how much did you spend for all that? Well, remember this this stone holder, by the way, I think it's like 300. Each one of these stones is like 40. Um, pilot, 300. Get the steel one for 70. 1,100 in this. You still need the... Uh, the, the refacer or the dresser for the stone and that's fifteen hundred dollars so to do the stone thing you're gonna have to have about three grand yeah or you can just take this head and you can go give it to machine shop and have them do it that's why when people say i just lapped it and fixed it <sighs> no you just smeared more lapping compound or you use like 120 grit lapping compound and got it this stuff's the better way to do it it's cost more to do things right but anyway that is a way to fix it without the seat and guide machine so if you don't want to spend 40 grand on a seat and guide machine remember that's just the seat and guide machine it doesn't include the pilots like this you're gonna to have to have a whole array of pilots and at 300 dollars a pop they've got like seven grand over there in tooling so forty-seven thousand dollars for seat and guide machine or about three thousand for stone deal you can do that but anyway uh, hopefully i've given you more to think about these are going to the seat and guide machine. I'll probably still have to use a stone because these things are way too hard. And even though my machine feels like it's great, these ones kick its rear. And I'm sure they would on almost any machine out there. Like, what about that single point cutter? Maybe, but part of me says doubtful because I've had just as many people tell me they have a problem keeping seats round with a single point cutter as they do with ones that aren't. Like I can probably tell you five different people that have had a single point cutter and a new one and we're very disappointed i shouldn't say five three that i could think of top of my head and we're very very disappointed and they never end up using a set in there until they sold it because they couldn't get it to work right so i don't know some if there's a single point cutter and some people have them work perfectly like i know matt at mbe does and so does um tom at 3v his works perfectly and they could do great valve jobs but I bet you there's an art to getting that machine to work perfectly too. So I don't think there's just one machine where you can like put this in and it cuts everything, even the hardest seats perfect. I bet that there isn't one. I bet even I bet even MBE and even 3V at some point still have to bring out these things. Or what they do is like, we're not cutting these hard things. We're gonna cut out these seats, pop out these seats and put in some seats that are, you can cut and are better. Chances are it's probably what they do. Because I know Matt uses a lot of the uh, copper beryllium stuff. In all fairness, that's the easiest stuff to cut. Horrible for your health, the easiest to cut, though. 
So maybe that has something to do with it. This stuff, and I don't confuse this with copper beryllium. No, no, don't even, not even close. This is copper crap. This is not copper beryllium. Uh, don't, don't confuse the two. One's really, really nice and one is not at all. So anyway, longer video of me ranting because I hate getting frustrated with stuff like this. Especially since I know this is going to be a whole day deal. That ain't going to make me a dime. Uh, anyway, you guys, thanks for watching. We ran out port, port cast iron heads. You guys, I'm no Superman. You guys take care.